welcome to this Hi everyone, welcome to this Aesthetic Medicine webinar. Today uh, we are joined by uh, Dr. Hussein from Dr. H Consult. Thank you for joining us. And uh, this webinar is um, sponsored by uh, Sign Assure. And today we're going to be talking about how uh, you can use laser to treat melasma and um, other um, skin concerns. So uh, Dr. H is going to uh, do a presentation for you all. And if there are any questions, feel free to put them in the comments on Facebook or in the Q&A chat box on Zoom. Um, so I'm just going to hand over to you now, Dr. Hussein. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to share my screen. One second. Here we go. Right. So uh, I'm Dr. Hussein. I'm uh, going to be talking to you today about uh, PicoShore Pro and how we use it to treat pigmentation in the skin. Um, so essentially, first of all, why do I sort of select this device as a go-to device for pigmentation? Because essentially 755 nanometers is um, the, the, the whole platform of this laser is based on 755 nanometer wavelength. And that is the gold standard for pigmentation treatment across all skin types. And essentially you'll probably be aware of the type of work we do. We, we, we treat all kinds of cutaneous laser indications uh, and pigmentation forms a big part of my management, especially because I do a lot of treatment of darker skin types with aggressive laser modalities such as CO2 resurfacing and um, you know, uh, other, other, other things in terms of scar management that, that can result in things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So this is something we generate ourselves. And as a result, we have to be able to manage it. So I needed a device that could deliver quick and effective management of all pigmentation indications in the skin. Um, and also ideally by not eliciting too much more downtime because they're obviously getting downtime from one procedure, we don't give them more downtime with other procedures and also people in general want to get back to um, work quickly if they're getting other indications such as melasma treated or cafe au lait macules or lentigos or whatever pigment indications we might be treating on the skin. So I'm going to go through the rationale um, of why we use this device and how we use this device effectively um, and also talk a little bit about my own experience by looking through some cases and uh, hopefully give you a good overview on what to do if you get one of these beautiful things ready for action in your practice. Okay, so as you can see, it's it's one of the it's the only laser that has got FDA approval for things like melasma, nevus avota. Um, <clears throat> FDA approval, um, you know, for, for, for things like melasma, not, not easy to acquire uh, because obviously uh, there are not many things that are very specific um, for the treatment of melasma, especially when it comes to devices. They usually have extended um, uses or roles, and melasma may be something that you can attempt to treat. There's not very well-defined mechanism of action. It's very interesting because most people, you know, I go to talks as well, and I talk at talks, and I listen to talks, and you, you, you often see people saying interesting things that are sort of opinions like I never use laser in the treatment of melasma and I was thinking well that's, that's a very strong strong opinion I mean have you have you ever just touched a laser before or did you say that because you principally agree that disagree that is a, a valid method of treating it um sometimes you know these statements mean not much it's a bit like me saying I like coffee well, well, that's great. It doesn't mean that it's the only drink, if you see what I mean. So what's very important is that any modality that is used to treat a uh, 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 pigmentation problem such as melasma is an effective modality. Uh, it won't aggravate things too much. It will result in improvement. Um, and ideally, if we can get that improvement with speed, minimal downtime, 
and good degree of reduction per treatment, then we're talking about a good, safe, effective treatment for melasma. So, or any other pigment uh, melanin indication within the skin for that matter when it comes to 755. So why, just a little bit of overview on the background science first. Um, why picoseconds? Obviously picosecond, now we've got into sort of the third generation of picosecond lasers. Um, we effectively are able to get our pulse width down to a level where we are specifically targeting Apologies, it's a test. Um, uh, we are specifically targeting, uh, you know, the pigment structures within the skin without causing damage to larger structures such as blood vessels or other adjacent structures, which means we cause less thermal damage to the skin and more mechanical damage to the melanin. So photoacoustic effect. In fact, much more of a true photoacoustic effect than we did originally get with lasers um, such as the nanosecond uh, lasers of before. So as you all know, there's two elements to selective photothermalysis. Um, there is the selectivity based on wavelength, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll explore in a minute on the next slide, and also the selectivity based on target size. If you match both of those things precisely, then you have a very good um, specific treatment for the problem. And here, as the problem is melanin, matching the target size and matching the wavelength are crucial. So here we can see that the reason why we have been a, a sort of sweet spot with 755 is because as you can see from the absorption spectra here, 755 has a very good uptake in melanin. And you can see that on the line. Now you're saying, hang on a minute, but 532 has greater. Yes, it does. But this creates two problems. Firstly, if you look at the fact that it also is very highly absorbed by oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin, that creates non-selectivity, which means that 532 basically is blanket treating melanin, blood, deoxygenated blood, and generally heating up tissues in general. Now, as you know, the more traumatic the treatment um, with things like melasma, um, the more problems you'll have in terms of rebound, inflammation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and all kinds of undesirable consequences um, following treatment. So the, the important thing to do look at in this graph is not just the actual high absorption, it's the gap between the absorption of melanin and the absorption of other things, um, other chromophores of that particular wavelength. So that's what makes it an ideal wavelength. The other thing to bear in mind is with 532, you're not going to get much depth of penetration. So the 532 will be largely taken up in the epidermis and any dermal problems, dermal melasma, dermal pigmentation will not get any effective energy through to, to, to destroy that pigmentation. So you're basically just going to be able to cook the surface with the 532. We don't have that problem with 755. As you know, 755 is also a wavelength that's very often used because of its longer nature to treat deeper structures such as hair follicles and things like that because it is a deeper penetrating wavelength. How about the 1064? Well, you can see on this graph, the 1064, okay, there's a gap, but again, not as great as the 755 gap between hemoglobin and melanin. And the other problem here is that it's poorly absorbed. So if you're using a platform that is based on 532-1064, because obviously, you know, those, those wavelengths come hand in hand very often, then you really are not using a platform that is optimized for the treatment of pigmentation. And this shows just by examples of sales of these types of lasers around the world. Pigmentation is a big industry in um, Southeast Asia and um, obviously um, areas of the world where skin types are darker. The biggest selling um, picosecond laser um, in, in, in sort of Fitzpatrick four to six skin types areas such as Southeast Asia is the Pikachu based on a 755 platform. 
because of its specificity for melanin. And there's just simply no question about that. Um, other manufacturers will probably try and simulate close to a 755 wavelength, but their platforms are not actually based on those wavelengths. So they are sort of extrapolating as best they can and not getting the optimum power in that category. So this is why my go-to was straight away um, uh, a 755 PK when it came to pigmentation. I knew I needed it from the start. Um, right, let's go on a little bit to talk about why this specificity is good. So this slide is an excellent slide to show you how we don't get collateral damage. So if you look at when we fire the 755 compared to other wavelengths, um, the erythema and trauma to the skin is minimal. And that is because we're not getting too much absorption in other chromophores. So the graph is illustrated here in the effect on the skin. So as you can see, anyone who knows about pigmentation and melasma treatment in darker skin types would vastly favor the after effects of the 755, i.e. the minimal disruption to collateral structures within the skin and the minimal erythema and inflammation compared to what we're getting with things like a 5321064 platform. So this means, as you can see, it's a much safer laser to use on darker skin types. So we've talked about the melanin to, melanin to, uh, melanin to blood ratios. We, let's talk about the fractionated element here. Now, when we fractionate the beam of this laser, what we're actually doing is we're creating high intensity micro-focused areas of energy within the skin. This actually causes something called light-induced optical breakdown. Two beneficial effects come here. Oringer showed that um, this not only helps with um, collagen remodeling, uh, the disruption created here is also um, specific as well to areas, uh, it's higher in areas of melanin content as well. So we can very, be very, very targeted towards melanin, melanin reduction with minimal trauma to the surrounding skin. So if, if we need to take, I mean, the Pico, the Pico Pro is a very powerful laser. So if we need to be a little bit more judicious, it sometimes pays um, to use the fractionated handpiece to achieve a much more controlled reduction of pigmentation rather than hitting it with the zoom handpiece where we'll get a much more extreme reduction of the pigmentation. So in treatments where we're trying to reduce pigmentation but not cause too much um, hypopigmentation or too much contrast, um, doing it progressively with a focused handpiece is an excellent way of doing it. And also what I'm finding you see, I'm very focused on individual indications. So I treat things like pigmentation. But what my patients will also say to me um, is my fine lines, my texture, my pores have all improved. And that's due to light-induced optical breakdown causing a nice collagen remodeling within the superior dermis. So, so you're getting the effects of good pigmentation evening, targeted pigmentation treatment, and also uh, collagen remodeling and also textural improvement with the fractionated 755 that will give you that over and above just using it on the fixed focus hand pieces. So let's have a little look about what's going on in light induced optical breakdown in the actual skin tissue itself. As you can see, these little vacuoles develop within the skin around areas of pigment and that triggers uh, minor focused damage, which then causes not only um, remodeling around the site of damage in the epidermal dermal junction, but also the like like Oringer showed and Tangetti showed in their papers that this epidermal dermal junction remodeling leads to deeper remodeling within the dermis itself. So the good thing is you're going to get a nice global rejuvenation effect in the skin with something like the focus handpiece, but again, minimal downtime. So I did a, a, a good run of these as we were testing the prototype of the laser here. We did a good run of these treatments um, 
by inviting patients with darker skin types in to see how they responded to the focus hampies. Over and above the old Pico Shore. So what I can categorically say now with the new Pico Pro is that we have got bags of power. It, it, it was with the old Pico Shore laser, I ended up trying to use the smaller spot sizes with the higher um, uh, fluences to try and get the desired effects. Now, having slightly been a bit over enthusiastic at first, I realized that uh, I can opt for the larger spot size, uh, go, um, go much less with my se uh, settings and, and still get efficacious treatments due to the increase in power in the new laser. And the good thing is that means I can cover larger surface areas quickly. And the beauty of these treatments is effectively this. What I might have used, a non-ablative laser like a Fraxel Jewel or um, you know something like a Halo before to achieve um, in um, certain types of rejuvenation, I can now achieve in a very quick and relatively uh, low discomfort treatment um, with very low downtime, uh, you know, a, a very similar result on improvements in texture, pigmentation, and um, fine lines. And, and the, the advantage here is that the patients can get back to work much more quickly. Um, the discomfort and the swelling is less, and, um, and they're pretty much operational within 24 to, to 48 hours after the treatment. And because we have less epidermal disruption, if they need to cover the flaking with a little bit of makeup or, or, or something um, that's going to sort of mask uh, things in the first few days, um, the beauty here is it, it, the epidermal isn't, epidermis isn't so disrupted that it would cause contact irritant dermatitis and prolong the healing because of the selective focal nature of this treatment. Good. So we've talked a bit about the fractional elements. We've talked a bit about 755 and why it is the pigment, um, sort of the pigment, uh, melanin pigment laser of choice when it comes to reducing pigmentation. Let's talk about some specific features of this newer generation PicoShore device. So first of all, compared to uh, what you might be used to with the old laser, this laser does have individual uh, control of fluence, uh, no matter what your spot size is. So, so this makes the new PicoShore Pro a lot more versatile for any clinician that wants to have more control on how intense they deliver their treatment. So you can control intensity on any given spot size, um, control it to the level of pigmentation you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with very light lesions based uh, compared to the background color, we can, we can increase the, the parameters. If we're dealing with very, very dark lesions, we don't want to cause too much um, disruption and trauma in the skin, we can, we can adjust accordingly. So a far more uh, modulatable um, treatment modality is what we have now with the individual control of the uh, fluence. Um, and the increase in power is around about the 50% mark when it comes to the overall peak power output of this device compared to the old generation device. So that now makes us have, um, whereas some indications were towards the higher end of what the Pico Shore, the older generation could achieve, those indications have now fallen well into the, the easy day-to-day -day category of what this laser can do. And also you have, you know, a nice margin over and above what you require because you, it's nice to know that you're not trying to operate your laser at the maximum outputs all the time um, just to try and achieve your desired effects. The five millimeter handpiece has also allowed um, sort of more concentrated treatment of smaller lesions um, because we can get much higher maximum fluence through this handpiece. Um, and uh, because of the sp smaller spot size, we can also sort of focalize the treatment to small areas without uh, having to overlap uh, onto normal skin. Remember, 
at all times, the beauty of using a pigment laser is that it's going to treat the areas that are darker more vigorously and the areas that are lighter less vigorously. So it's almost like a, a self-limiting treatment. So even if you do wave the handpiece all over the face, you're still going to get better reduction of the darker areas and less reduction of the lighter areas, which is why you get this beautiful homogenizing effect, which you will see um, on the photos as they come up. So this is just to show you uh, the range of fluences uh, based on spot size. So let's have a look at some slides now. So the first few slides are from colleagues around the world, and I've got a set of slides that come from my cases as well. So you can see this device in action. So here you can see how the selectivity of the 755. So if you use a 532, imagine if we used a 532 in this type of skin type, it, it just wouldn't wash. You'd make them temporarily Caucasian. And much as they want their pigment lightening, they don't want to temporarily become a Caucasian person for a few weeks. So especially if you're focusing on certain areas, instead of getting a dark area on their normal skin, you'll get an inverse light area on their normal skin, which won't necessarily be a win in any way. Um, and this, because of the heat of 532, often is quite a long duration of hypopigmentation. So here we can see the darker areas have lightened nicely, yet the background skin tone remains well within normal limits. So this is the beauty of a selective 755 platform with power like the PikaShore Pro. You can get darker skin types treated and up and running very quickly and not have to run away from them at all times. Here you can see on um, specific uh, imaging of, 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 of chrome 4 targets within the skin with Vizia, um, how, how things have reduced in pigment density over treatment. Um, this was the focus treatment. So you can see here, you get a more progressive reduction. Um, let's have a little look at some more cases in detail. So here we can see melasma. My, my go-to now with melasma on the PicoShore Pro is using the focus handpiece. And if we are getting um, sort of deeper dermal melasma, sometimes I would consider using the zoom handpiece. But with a new Pico Pro laser, because of its power, we've got to be quite conservative. I found with my initial cases, because I was used to the older laser, I was not as conservative as I should have been, and I got some temporary lightning. But because this is very specific uh, photoacoustic effect, that lightning uh, normalized within a couple of weeks. So, so my learnings on the new laser, given that we were effectively testing the prototype, are that if we're going to treat deeper dermal pigmentation, the zoom handpiece we can use, that is not a problem at all, but be very conservative uh, with the treatment, low fluences, um, you know, start with low, low fluences and, and then your go-to will still be the focus handpiece for your melasma because the beauty is the 755 still in, in a focus uh, handpiece will penetrate down to uh, the superficial dermis as well and specifically target melanin. And you can, in vary the intensity, but still get minimal trauma downtime and rebound with that. Now, just for a moment, let's think about melasma. The problem in the world in general right now is with treatment for melasma is just a very slow thing. The, the thing that I really, really annoys me when I, when I see doctors talking about it, they, they talk about topicals, they wax lyrical about hydroquinone and I mean let's 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 talk about mainstay treatments like hydroquinone there's always an indication for things like hydroquinone but if you have melasma I, I had a patient just before this webinar actually funnily enough it seemed to be a, a melasma related day she came in she had um, melasma since 2013 and I said 
well, well, how have you treated it so far? And uh, she said, well, well, I've used a number of sort of over-the-counter topicals, and then I've been prescribed things like hydroquinone, and it helps, but it helps really slowly. The thing is, you know, patients with melasma, women with melasma, for example, they have it every day of their lives, and they're bothered by it. If you say to them, we might be able to mildly reduce it over the period of many, many months, there's, uh, there's not great leaps of happiness in that patient. It's like saying, um, you know, we're going to um, make you better uh, over a period of 40 years. Um, you know, that's, that's great. But other things might have become problems in, in that time. So my go-to, and I have no embarrassment in saying this, is that if you don't, if you don't go to a laser for treatment of pigmentation, then you are not being someone rapid, efficacious, and really high-end with your treatments. I don't, I don't want to waste people's time with lengthy topical courses. I want to sort their problem out quickly. I might then put them on maintenance topicals afterwards to help make their cells more dormant, but it's not going to be my mainstay treatment. And why a chemical peel? Well, a chemical peel is hardly specific. A chemical peel gives you a chemical burn of the whole skin surface. This is, this is a bit like saying, well, you know what? They've got melasma. I'm just going to take my erbium YAG laser and resurface the top of their skin. Well, we all know that that's probably only going to temporarily cause some benefit. And that's very rapidly going to cause other problems like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, rebound, and melasma. So, so an ablative laser is not, um, you know, uh, a good mainstay for pigmentation treatment for melasma, neither is a global chemical peel. So I don't care what the ingredients that you might have added to the peel are, it is nowhere near as selective as a 755 picosecond laser for target size and wavelength absorption. So, you know, it's a bit like comparing, um, you know, sending in an army or sending in an elite SAS unit to release hostages. I mean, you, you could probably achieve the same with an army of a thousand people, but many hostages might be expended in the process. Um, or you can set, send an elite military force to go and specifically take out the bad guys and sort out the problem in a very clinical way. That's what 755 Pico Pro Laser is. Other cases here can be demonstrated the nice selective nature, but the background pigment preservation. Here, I think what people, it looks like my colleagues are doing it in, in, in three treatments here because they, they probably found the same as me. Overly zealous treatment at the beginning can cause um, a little bit more reduction than we would like. You know, this is, this is not a bad thing to say. You know, be careful because your device is very powerful um, and it does things uh, very, very effectively. So perhaps just use it a little bit more judiciously. That's, that's an excellent thing. Very often in the device world, we're posed with devices that even when you max out, they don't deliver the expectations that uh, something like this uh, can easily deliver. Another beautiful case where you can see um, FLEDs and uh, sun damage uh, nicely mopped up but again, with no hypopigmentation on a Fitzpatrick skin type four here. So, so beautiful selective pigment reduction. And this is what I mean by it treats the pigment where the pigment is and the pigment where the pigment is unwanted. The pigment that is wanted doesn't get harmed. So that is a beautiful tool. Uh, acne scarring, macular hyperpigmentation as well. At the end of the day, if the pigment chromophore is melanin, then this laser will sort the job, whether it be epidermal, dermal, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or any form of melanin within the skin, neva savota, you know, all these um, melanin pigments will be selectively reduced. Here we go for neva savota. You can see the, the nice clearance we would have got with the zoom handpiece here. Uh, unifying skin texture here is much more textural and um, you know improvement as well not just 
uh, the, the pigment within the skin, which is why we can use it for low grade epidermal and superficial dermal irregularities as well. Darkness around the eyes, obviously nevus avota here. So, so again, cases of nevi that have been sorted out, uh, macular um, pigmented lesions such as um, sort of DPN separate keratosis type lesions can be nicely dealt with as well. So let's talk about some of my cases now. Um, so I can give you a little bit more background to this because obviously talking about other doctor's cases is, is, is great, but um, I, can't, I can't tell you exactly what was done when we were there. So this is some of the cases that we've been doing on um, testing the, um, the uh, Pico Pro uh, prior to its release. So here we had a Fitzpatrick uh, foreskin type with uh, lentigenes. Now, previously I would have, when I had a Q-switch laser, for example, have done this with a 532, the way I would have prepared this patient would be to say to her, look, what's going to happen is your skin is going to crust, it's going to fall off, it's going to leave a hypopigmented red area, then this area will slowly heal, it will then become darker, then you'll think that the pigmentation has come back, but that's not actually a lentigo, that is actually post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And then after about two months, it will settle down. And they go, so what, in three months, this will get better. Well, well yeah, it's going to take a while, but at least it will be sorted. That's the kind of expectation management we had to give in the older generation of lasers. Now we can get to this result within literally two or three days, maybe, maybe five days at max. There's a little bit of erythema there, residual, but you can see it's nicely cleared. There's no hypopigmentation. She looks like a normal patient within three, four days, and she doesn't have to do much in terms of covering the area. Tough pigmentation challenges as well. Um, you can see this is a, a sort of a Becker's nevus that was already treated with long pulsed Alex in the past. Here, with just one treatment um, with the Pico Pro, we fragmented it uh, with the zoom handpiece, uh, as you can see into much smaller fragments, you can actually see the outlines of the spot size. Uh, and in the Becker's nevus, which is an except, as, as all dermatologists know, very exceptionally challenging lesion. The only stories at the moment that people give with Becker's nevus, is, here's one I've treated for years and look, it is a bit better. Well, here's one we treated with one treatment and it's a lot better. So, so in those beer conversations, I would be definitely winning right now around the table of other doctors. So, so that's the advantage of specificity with picosecond 755. Here, uh, someone decided to um, take the little dark brown spots out with surgery in this Neva spillus, but uh, obviously they didn't decide to cut the whole thing out. Um, so it left us with this interesting um, nevus, um, but we decided to try and blend things a little bit more. And this is again after one zoom Pico Shore treatment. Uh, you can see we've got quite a comprehensive reduction. And again, not that ridiculous hypopigmentation that you get with things like a 532 nanometer laser. Now, this, what kind of comical stuff is this? This is someone we hyperpigmented when we treated their acne scarring. As you can see, he's got a mask of hyperpigmentation. It is not bizarre melasma. It is a poor guy after CO2 that I performed. Now, obviously his acne scarring is a lot better, which was the overall purpose. But as you can imagine, he was quite shocked. No matter how much we told him, don't worry, you'll get hyperpigmented and it'll get better. He, he, he sent a text to me saying, it's getting me down a little bit. And then at that point I took mercy on him and said, come in, let's get this sorted out with the Pico Pro for you. And literally within four days, he was looking like the picture on the right. So no matter how bad your post-inflammatory high pigmentation is caused by merciless human beings like me, at least I can make it better and solve my own problems. So there you go, uh, post-inflammatory high pigmentation Courtesy of Dr. H, treated courtesy of Dr. H. Pico Short, Pico Pro. Here we go with a gentleman. This is, this, is, this is a great slide to show you how far technology has come along. This gentleman came to me 
Because guess what? On the left, he had this birthmark and they used long pulsed Alex to treat it. And he lost his beard hair. So in, in the old days, it was a choice between, well, we could, we could try and lighten your birthmark, but you are going to lose your beard. So now he's obviously a little bit upset about the beard loss and he wants a hair transplant in that area. But when we do the Pico Pro, because of the selectivity of the picosecond wavelength for the target, we cause no damage to hair. So they can still, had this treatment been started now, he would still have his beard. And to boot, he would have a much better reduction of his birthmark as well. So things mercifully have come a long way rather than, and selectivity has come a long way in, 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 and it's almost one of the lasers that I would say that incarnates the, the, the most advancement that we've experienced in the laser world of selectivity for target wavelength and selectivity for target size is the Pico Pro. Here we go on a uh, melasma case. This was an old Pico treatment. Now, the good thing is, um, I was operating at the higher end of the old laser spectrum with this treatment. Um, here, this is pretty easily achievable with very, very mild settings on the Pico Pro. So do not be afraid that your laser cannot cut it. The Pico Pro most certainly can. Here we go. I slightly overcooked this one. You can see uh, this was one of my earlier cases when testing this prototype laser. So you see I've caused a little bit of hypopigmentation, but as you can see, it rapidly repigments there in the center because this is photomechanical effect, not photothermally induced hypopigmentation. So the recovery time for this is much faster. And as you can see, the degree of erythema compared to something like a 532 treatment of this is a lot less as well. Difficult cafe au lait macules that don't have high contrast on darker skin types, um, so we can also do that with the 755. Here, honestly, I could have been a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so the, the biggest thing here in getting used to this laser, but now we've got six months of experience with it, is getting the right balance of energy, spot size, uh, fluence, fractionated or non-fractionated. And once you sort of get experience with that, you can just deliver very, very safe, rapid recovery treatments. It literally will be your go-to device for any pigmentation. And obviously, even though we don't treat things like tattoos, unless they're in complex places around the eyes or, or traumatic tattoos, this was just for my own um, you know, uh, desire to see a friend who had uh, something that he was, uh, she was trying to get treated, but couldn't successfully get cleared much more. We just did one Pico Pro. So if you ever have to do, use your Pico Pro for um, difficult to treat uh, tattoos, it is very effective to say the least. So thank you very much for listening to uh, what I had to say on the Pico Pro, uh, my go-to tool for treatment of melasma and melanin uh, pigmented lesions within the skin. Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Hussein. That was a really interesting talk and great to learn a bit more about the Pico Pro. Um, we have had a question on Facebook from Agnes, who yes. wants to know how the laser is going to influence melanocytes and is the pigmentation going to reappear quickly post-treatment? Yes. If... So, very good question. So here, when we are targeting pigment, you can see in all the cases that we've demonstrated here, that because the effect is what we call photomechanical stress on the pigment itself, the melanoblast cells in the hair follicles are undamaged. So the skin's potential to regenerate melanin is not harmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there may be occasions if, if you were being very non-judicious with your uh, treatment that you might cause long-term hyperpigmentation, but we've never, never, no matter how, and I, and you know, I'm not one that is known for their 
light-handed approach uh, in my style. So um, I have never caused a permanent hypopigmentation with this laser. Um, and remember, uh, being, uh, being a brown guy, I treat a lot of brown people, 150 of my resurfacings a year uh, out of 500 are performed with full ablation on uh, darker skin types. So, um, you know, and that's using dangerous lasers like CO2 and erbium. This is an exceptionally safe device. I do not lose any sleep about people. Even if I use the zoom handpiece on an aggressive setting, I know that if I temporarily hyperpigmented them within about two to three weeks, they will repigment. And that's not a problem. Because like I said, the if, if you do get hypopigmentation, like I said, which is, is rare, and if you especially just make sure you're starting a little bit more conservatively and dial, dial up rather than go too high and dial down, you'll still be safe. You'll still not cause any long-term issues. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think that was all the questions we had um, from people watching the webinar. Um, okay. If you do want to know more, you can join Dr. Husting and the Singashore team at their Chiswick Customer Experience Centre on June 30th from 6 to 9 p.m., uh, where you can learn Absolutely. about um, what patients are looking for with access to exclusive customer insights into how you can provide treatments for people. Uh, are looking for um, the link to get tickets for that are, is on our Facebook page and also in the chat on Zoom now. Uh, tickets are limited, so make sure you get your tickets quickly. Um, we have just had one more question quickly. Sorry, in the Zoom chat, yes. which is asking um, how effective is um, azelic acid and excuse my pronunciation on this one. Kajic acid. Um, acid, yeah, Kajic acid and azelaic acid. Yeah, yeah. for uh, melasma and photoaging hyperpigmentation, and is it compatible with the lasers? Well, remember I gave that analogy earlier on. It's, it's the problem here with azelaic acid. Uh, if you look, if you use the the military analogy that I gave earlier on with armies and like specialist SAS teams, I guess azelaic acid and kojic acid are effective. But the problem is that the epidermal barrier is precisely that, it's a barrier. So it's, it's like having your army on one side and they need to attack, but there's a massive thick wall between them and the people that they have to attack. Now, for topicals like azelic acid and kojic acid, once they get through this wall, most of their concentration has decreased down to a fraction of what it was when they were on the other side of the wall. So the effective concentration of the active ingredient getting to the site of action is the problem when we're using surface applied topicals. Now this can be enhanced with laser assisted drug delivery. Some people will try and enhance it with microneedling, but the problem is the fibrin that blocks up the holes very quickly creates a blockage to that. So there are slight ways of getting around it, but it's not the most efficacious way. To a laser, the epidermis, like the 755, the epidermis might as well just be transparent because it doesn't get stopped by the, the physical barrier of the epidermis. The light and the photons pass straight through it like the light passes through a window, basically. So, so you know, you don't, you, don't, you don't have a glass window and don't get any light through. On the contrary, all the light comes through it. So, so the same with the 755, all the laser energy gets to the target which makes it a much, much more focused way of dealing with pigmentation. So it's not that azelaic acid or kojic acid aren't effective. Mm -hmm. It's just the mechanism of topical application of these uh, substances is just slow to elicit improvement. So, I mean, you know, it's fine. You can get them over the counter or you can get them on prescription. But if you want to come to someone who's going to solve your more problem more quickly, then you need to come to a doctor or a clinician with a Pico second 755 blazer. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you for your time, Dr. He's saying it's been a great talk. And um, if you want to watch this back, it will be available to watch on our Facebook and our Instagram pages in case really? you wanted to go back and get any more information. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, guys. Hope that was all good. I'll, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.